may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Share, subscribe, like this video. Make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. We've come to another day. Today is the 28th. I do believe within the next 24 to 48 hours, the red heifers will be sacrificed. The Bible code says that something will take place on the 29th. Now, I don't know if that is tomorrow's 29th or not, but I just got a feeling it will. As I've been speaking to many others, including Kim Fisher, that's been seeing anything. If you haven't watched Kim Fisher's last video, make sure you go over there and check it out. Gigi did an excellent one also, and also Brother Aaron there at God. I'm going to check out what he has. Uh, but Gigi's at Blue Heaven. And uh, we've all been covering a lot of this stuff. We all seem to know, without a doubt, that something's going on. We're seeing very strange things. Just by the reaction that the United States has taken with what's going to happen on April the 8th, telling residents to have two weeks of food, gas, food. This is going on in many other places. First, I kind of overlooked it. I thought, well, maybe, you know, they're just, you know, just taking precautions. Maybe they know there's a terrorist attack. Maybe that's the day that they might try to do something. Maybe that's the day that the big cyber attack happened. It's very possible. The movie... There on Netflix. I just seem to keep going back to it. I don't know why, but it's in the back of my mind always. You know, after Sister Shelley watched it, and she was so eager for me to watch it, I've watched it two or three times, seeing if I can grab anything from it. Let's see here. <clears throat> I'm kind of looking for something to see. Do, 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 do. I can't never remember the name of it. I don't know why. I just, I just cannot remember it. Leave the world behind. I don't know why I'm going to have to write that down. But in the middle of that movie, it shows the solar eclipse. And it just don't make no sense why it's there. It just doesn't. This solar eclipse happens right at the time this huge cyber attack happens. You're asking me probably why I'm bringing this up now. Late yesterday evening, some supermarkets in the U.S., the Midwest, are telling customers cash only. The reason I'm bringing this up because a lot of the people in Oklahoma and places where the eclipse is going to go through have already told people to have cash on hand. So stay with me. So the U.S. Midwest are telling customers cash only as something has gone wrong with the credit card processing. Visa is showing outages reported by down detector. Now this has been another cyber attack. This has been a big one. Reports are starting to roll in about some type of credit card outage. Readers and listeners from the Midwest have reported that Kroger supermarkets near them are telling them cash only. The down detector map on top shows outages reports coming in regarding Visa and many other areas. It says readers from Iowa are reporting that this outage is affecting gas stations too. One reader claims that he went to three different gas stations and was told cash only. Turkey here convenience store in New York, in New York, Pennsylvania. Systems are down cash only. In Omaha, it looks like maybe is that Nebraska, I'm not sure. And all the cases, uh, all the cases are down. I've never seen it shopped at that store. Daytona, Ohio, all speedways were only accepting cash. 
Now, this has happened in the last 24 hours. This has been another major cyber attack. We had one a couple of weeks ago. They took down a lot of medical uh, prescriptions, stuff like that. Or did we? Listen, the Lord knows something's coming. He's been warning us. He's been telling us to be ready. Me and Kim Fisher have talked, and we both feel that something big is about to happen. And we've already had this bridge incident. Now, I did read an article that these these boats, these massive what we call uh, container ships, supposed to have a backup for backup for backup. In other words, what should what happened to the key bridge should not have happened. I'm very curious to know strategically how important that bridge was and why somebody would want to take it out. If anybody has the answer to that or wants to look into it, put it in the description below. I've just got a feeling. I don't know why, but it's something we need to look into. Because that bridge must have been very important. If these container ships, even if they lose control, or even if they're hacked, they have backup for backup. And even if everything fails, they're supposed to be able to still steer. But this one didn't. My question is, what was on the other side of that bridge? That's stuck there now. That could have been that could have been going out to sea. That's another good question that we might want to look into. There's a lot happening. Listen to me very clearly. There is a lot of stuff happening, and we knew that this was coming. I've told you for weeks that things are about to get really crazy, and they are. I feel that in the spirit, and I see it. And it's like these warning bells keep going off. Today, out of nowhere, I heard Fukushima, the plate of the Fuku, uh, Fukushima uh, plate that's built, uh, going up against the uh, the American plate. I got the Holy Spirit, bam, had it in me. And trust me, I wasn't thinking about that. It just popped in there. So that's something else. Now, that also triggers up to the Cascadia and to the San Andreas where San Francisco lies. And we all know the backstory of that. We've got to keep our eyes on the West Coast. God's warning me about the Fukushima plate. Now, it's funny that that popped in my head today after what happened to Oregon, you know, 24 hours ago. Anytime you have any kind of earthquake at the Cascadia zone, it is dangerous. That's one of the most dangerous places on the planet. The last time it really went off, it almost destroyed the pan from the United States to Japan. I mean, they got a tsunami like no other. Now, the Bible is warning us in the Bible code itself that after April the 8th, tsunamis and different things that we've not seen in our time is going to start to take place. That's why I said, God will warn you before judgment's coming. He loves his children, and he's warned us. Now, many others won't believe it until it's too late. But where we that are awake, we see these things coming. And we're trying to warn people. It's not time we're trying to scare you. Listen, I don't want to scare anybody. I just want people to be awake and know what's happening around them and what Lucifer's doing. That he's building up an army and getting everything in place for the Antichrist. How do I know this? The Bible tells me so. I'm just very fortunate that God has given me a lot of information and I've been awake to see a lot of things and I watch patterns. Most people don't see patterns like I do, but I watch patterns. I'm not like Brother Aaron there at God a minute. He's a big pattern guy, just like I am. We see patterns in everything, even if we don't want to. And I've been lucky enough to see Lucifer's patterns and what he's doing. How he's setting up the two biggest superpowers to go to a fight. Because I know it benefits him. A world without the United States of America is a very scary world. You know, you can say whatever you want to say about this great country, but it was founded in the right way. It was founded by God. God has used this country and its citizens to protect Israel for a long, long time. This nation has done a great job by providing gospel around the world in places we couldn't get to. There has been missionaries that lost their lives in the field, providing the word of God to many nations through this country. 
And God has used this country. And that's why we haven't been judged the way we should have been judged. But America has fulfilled its purpose. Understand this, that we're at the end. And America is going to be judged. America has went away from God more and more every 10 years. And it's at the point now where America doesn't even believe in God. And we still got our good people here that are praying for Israel. That are providing for Israel. And God knows that. That's why he's coming to get us. The ones that are doing that. And we will be leaving soon. But I, once again, I tell you not to fear. These horrible things have to come. The Bible tells us that. Trust in the blood of Jesus. If you trust in that blood of Jesus, you will be spared from this. I know many's going to tell you you're not. That you're going to have to go through it. But that, there are, that's a lie. I can a thousand percent sit here and tell you that they're liars. And they will be judged as so. There is a rapture and it is coming. We will be leaving this earth very soon. Thank God. We don't have to see the suffering of people anymore. But a lot of people want to stay here. They cannot let go of this sinful world and how evil it is. They love this planet and they don't want to let go of it. And they will probably be left here to go through seven years of the worst hell this earth has ever seen. Most of the worst people on this planet don't even believe that Jesus was on that cross. Most Christians don't even believe in what he did. They believe they're still under the law, under the Ten Commandments. They erase everything that Jesus did on that cross. But I'm telling you, it's very easy to be saved today. Many's going to tell you there's a million other ways. I'm here to tell you there's one. And he did it all. And if you truly believe that he died for you, I don't care what you've done. I've been on drugs. I've sold drugs. I did it all. I was pretty bad. But God never left me. Even after I was saved, I fell and I fell again. And you're always going to fail and you're always going to fall. But he never leaves. He never leaves his sheep. Never. Many will tell you he does. That's another lie. Satan lies to a lot of people. He uses a lot of Christians to spread his lies. Because they don't know the Bible. They've never caught up on Jesus to learn it correctly. And they use hearsay to spread their lies. Just like the attack on Brother Barry Awe the other day. Like I said, I don't agree with Dr. Barry with everything. But he's a very intelligent man. He'll never convince me that he don't love Jesus. That man is sealed. He does not need to re repent. Also, looking for rapture dates is not a salvation issue. Anybody says it is, they're a liar. It is not. There's nothing wrong looking for the rapture. That's what you're supposed to do. But here's the thing that me and Dr. Barry always seem to counter on me. It's, I believe it can be any time. Because the Bible says to be watching or he'll come as a thief of the night. If I think it's going to be on a feast day, well, if it's on a feast day, he's not going to come as a thief. So I, if I'm, it's going to happen on Passover. I wouldn't, you know, that's, that defeats the purpose of the rapture. The rapture is not like any other thing. It was hidden from Lucifer himself. Because Lucifer, like what mo most people will not agree with this, but I will tell you this, in my opinion, not thou say the Lord, but Lucifer will try to stop the rapture. He will. He won't, but he will try. He will lose. But the day of the rapture, Lucifer has a plan to try to stop it. It will fail. And his backup plan is this right here. That's what it is. We all know it. It's all been built up in Hollywood forever. The little green men are going to come down here to save mankind. And people believe that. Knowing that this is Lucifer's army. An army of fallen angels with technology. People think of angels with wings. They have billions of years on us, technology-wise. They're not up there in a galaxy somewhere. They're in dimensions. Their own dimensions, and they go in and out. That's why their technology seems to be so more advanced than ours. Their technology works different in our dimension. 
That's why they can go thousands of miles an hour, stop on a dime, go up and down. These Nephilim and their new bodies are everywhere. People don't believe in that, but that's the truth. They're out there. And when we leave, people here will get their first dose of it. And it will be horrifying to them when you start to see these things out here not hiding anymore. And how many of them are in the governments, God only knows. But they're real. And Jesus said, just like in the days of Noah, that's what was happening back then. These things was trying to change the DNA of man, and they succeeded on most counts. And God had to destroy. God the Father destroyed the world. And here we are again. Do you think what happened in 2020 was an accident? By getting everybody to take these things and trying to force them to take them and pay them to take them? Why? Why'd they do that? You better know who the true enemy is and what they're up to. Because they're after you. They can't touch us. But they know who we are. But God knows what they've done. I knew after 2020 that God was done. While the church was telling everybody a great revival was coming, God was telling me nothing like that. He was done. And he is coming to get his people. But back, back, back to Dr. Barry Ogg. I know he loves Jesus. Him and Don, they are D, I'm sorry. Her, him and D are very good people. He's a great teacher. The only thing difference that we ever had was, you know, him versus feast days versus me it can be any time. That was it. But he's a great friend, a good person. And I know if God was going to warn anybody, he would tell Barry himself. He won't use somebody else to do it. I've had many people approach me with this same idea. Well, God gave me it. Well, if God's going to give you it, he ain't going to give it to you. He's going to give it to me. I communicate with him all the time. I talk to God more than I talk to people. If I'm doing wrong, trust me, he'll smack me upside the head. He has before. He will not use somebody else to come at me. Every time I see that, that is a flag, and I know who, who's behind that. Now, these people might think it's from God, but God, these these familiar spirits, you've got to be, even I am very protective over them because I know that they can come at any moment and speak in your ear. And a lot of times they do that because Christians don't know the word of God. I never realized how bad Christians don't know the Word of God until I started this show, and it's frightening. Almost 75% do not know Scripture. That was another sign to me of how close we are to leaving here, because we fulfilled our purpose, the church has. We're uneducated, and I'm not saying I'm some great teacher. I'm not. I was uh, the same way, very uneducated, and still learning day by day. But it's went on so long that the it's just bad. That's another reason why I know we're not going to be here much longer. Because the church has fallen away so bad that it's just, it's no help anymore. There's only a handful of us teaching what God gave Paul, setting up the church, the bride. Most Christians don't even know we're called the bride. They don't even have a clue. Most believe, like I said, we're still under the law. We're not. We're under grace. They defeat what Jesus did on the cross. See, he died for all sins. He said it was finished. So when you see people writing this stuff, that you know, hiding behind your sins and all that stuff, they don't know scripture. I know that's it's harsh, but it's the truth. Jesus already died for all sins. All you got to do is accept the gift. And all your sins, past, present, future, are gone. Just like that. But see, these people that say that, believe that they're not a sinner and that's a lie this fleshly body will continue to sin up until the day we're gone it's just that's how it is what happens when you accept the gift you get clean on the inside your soul it turns from black to white you're clean and when Jesus comes back he's not going to look out here now the church and all these people that teach this about sin that's what they teach. He's going to look for the outside. That's that's under the law. We're not under the law. Dispensations. God told us about dispensations for a reason. 
the dispensation of grace is now, the dispensation of law was there, and the disp dispensation of law will come back once we're gone. You'll have to prove yourself worthy of Jesus once we leave. Right now is the easiest time to be saved. Today we're going to be reading Revelation 14. Let's see. And I looked, and lo, the Lamb stood to the Mount to Mount Zion, and him 140 and 4,000 uh, having his Father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from the heaven as the voice of many waters and the voice of great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but a hundred and forty and four thousand which is redeemed from the earth. There are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins. These are the these which follow the lamb uh, whistle over the he goeth. These were redeemed from men among men, being the f first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no gall, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Now, many people have different beliefs here of who they are. I'm not sure. I've stated it a million times. I had a theory, but like I said, it's not from the Lord. It's my, my theory was they was the kids, the children that was sacrificed or they was hunted down thinking that they was Jesus' babies and killed. Now, that was that was what came to me. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of the heavens, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto the, to them that dwell on the earth in every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him, and made heaven and earth and sea and the fountains of water. And they, there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is falling, and it's falling, the great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine and the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into a cup of indignation and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of the torment ascendeth up and ever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, nor uh, who worship the beast in his image, and whoever receiveth the mark in his name. Here is the patience of the saint. Here are they that kept the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth ye save the Spirit, that ye may rest from the labors and the works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of earth is ripe. And he sat on the cloud, thrust in his sickle on earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in the sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, and her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust into the sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of earth and cast the great uh, winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trotted without the city. And blood came out of the winepress and even into the house bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. furlongs. That is Revelation 14. I'm sorry I kept you a little bit late today. I just want to stress to you, like I said, I'm not jumping on to people. Like I said, I am, we're all, we've all had our faults and we all didn't realize that we was being taught the wrong things. I think all of us was asleep at one point, not realizing all the damage Satan's truly done to the world. And we don't blame anybody. 
you know, luckily God woke us up in time and we just got to wake more people up. That's what we got to do. We're not on here to jump on anybody or make anybody mad. Listen, that's not what we're doing. We're just saying we're in the last days and all the evidence is right around us. It's all around us at all times. You just got to look. That Lucifer's done his job. He's definitely destroyed this world. And luckily, God woke us up enough right before the end to see it so we could get more people on that ark. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another day, Father. Thank you for blessing us, for waking us up. There are so many of us now that are awake, and we see what Lucifer's doing around the world. We know the end of the world's coming. We know the tribulation is right around the bend. We see it. We know the rapture is close. Thank you, Lord, for just waking us up. We're so grateful. Lord Jesus, protect the watchmen and watchwomen, the good ones out there preaching the right gospel, for we're being attacked from every angle. That's why we started doing this every morning, so I can ask you to protect them all over these social media networks, the ones preaching the correct gospel, to protect them from these people that Satan will use against them. Protect them and their families, 700 feet around them at all times, with a shield. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Lord Jesus, watch over Israel in these dark days to come. We know what's coming. We see Jacob's trouble right around the bend. And we ask you, Lord, to just be with them in these dark days. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for the homeless, the hungry, and the, the sick. To reach out to them, Lord, the sick. If, they, if you're sick on this day, put your hands in the air. And you pray, I will be healed on this day. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for watching over all the innocents around the world in these dark days. We see wars and rumors of wars all over. We know judgment's coming, Lord. You have given us plenty of evidence of that. And we thank you for letting us know. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for protecting and watching over us. I pray for those who come against me and the channel and all these other channels that you lighten their hearts before it's too late. Lord Jesus, thank you for just putting a roof over our heads and food on the table. We know there's many that don't have that and not blessed with it. So just be with us. Just protect us, Lord, until we leave. We know it's soon. In Jesus' name I pray. And amen. Also, Lord, I want to mention about all the ones who leave the comments about their loved ones also. Each and every day they come here, each and every day putting their loved ones' names in there, each and every day. You know who they are. You are the one who gave me the idea to put that in these videos. You see those names, and they will. I do believe 100,000% will be saved and on that ark before, the, before all this stuff comes down. They will be in the rapture. In Jesus' name I pray, and amen. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for all that you do for supporting the channel. We're all family. we got to stick together. A lot of times we're all not going to agree on things. We're just not. And I don't think it's meant for us to. But we got to stick together. You know, I know how important you guys are. You're my family, even though you don't know me and I don't know you. As I said, I will never forget the kindness that I have seen from you all and what you do. God bless each and every one of you. For your kindness and love. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube. Letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep. Those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.